Hey guys, it's Matt, and hey, another quick tutorial, I guess, maybe, um, just a video to show, hey, some progress, and with a title like this, you're probably near the channel, so, hi. Hopefully we can solve any, uh, slight audio problems for you. So, let's get into it. I'm promising quite a bit by saying, improve your audio quality with just one little fix or something like that in the title. And I'm actually going to show you two different ways of doing it. Uh, one is going to be the simple, easy, little, if you use OBS, just do this. The other way will involve a little bit more of a, I'm going to say process, just because it is going to be universal for your, whatever your setup is. Um, and hopefully what you're hearing right now proves that it sounds good, but I know that there is an argument to be made because I'm using a $100 microphone and a $60, $70 mixer, but hopefully I can show you that no matter what mic you're using, whether it be a $20 wireless mic or a $20 wired lavalier mic, which I don't think I've really done a review on this channel yet, but it works well or one of the cheapest mics on Amazon, the newer NW700, which I'm doing this part just as a kind of request in one of the comments. Hopefully you're watching this video and you're able to tell what this would sound like. If you're still going with this option, please stick around for the entire video because I would recommend this with this kind of setup. So after all that testing is out of the way, hopefully everything sounds well enough. Let's get into it, shall we? Method one is going to be the easiest and simplest, and we're just going to call this the, I guess, stream only, record only kind of setup. So let's hop over to the computer and get that set up, shall we? Welcome to the desktop. So this part is going to be going over essentially just for streaming or if you record only with OBS, or I guess in this case, OBS Studio or even OBS Studio Streamlabs any version of OBS Studio will have access to this. So let's go ahead and open it up. And as you can see here, we have everything kind of right here. We have our desktop audio, everything like that. Now, you're not going to notice much of a difference between my mic here and when I start recording on here, there's not gonna be much of a difference because I have the more advanced way set up, which I would highly recommend everyone stay and check out but I get, if you just want to stream, you just want to record using OBS, you just want to make everything clear, keep everything in one spot, here's how you do that. So, the one thing that you're going to need to download is Reaper plugins, which I have right here. And, word of advice, Reaper has its own software. You definitely need to buy the software in order to do anything with it, but they basically have their plugins for free. So go ahead, click either of these buttons right here, whether you're 32, 64, anything like that. Link obviously in the description below. And once you do that, go ahead and just run the install. It should install to a VST folder and easy as that. So obviously if you install it right now, you're going to need to close out OBS Studio, slobs, whatever you're using and reopen it. Now that you've done that, go ahead, click on this little gear, and this button that you've probably seen a million times, filters. Go ahead and add a VST2X plugin. And go ahead and click here. I have quite a bit of plugins installed right now, but the one that we are really going to be looking at is going to be the Refear standalone. Go ahead and click that and open audio interface. Once you do that, you're going to get kind of a spectrogram little graph right here, and it's going to look very terrifying. Don't worry, it's really not that bad. What you're going to do, instead of on EQ, go ahead and change that to subtract. Now you're going to see kind of the same thing, it's going to do everything, but this box is going to pop up. Go ahead and click this and try to stay as silent as possible. This will automatically detect any noise and essentially make a graph 
that will be that cutoff point. So let's click that. And once it's done, go ahead and click it again, and it should have that little red line tracing where your noise comes from. And if you want to add a bit of output gain, you can always do that too. For now, I'm not doing any of that. And there you go. Your audio should sound a lot cleaner just doing that. From there, what you would probably want to do, probably still want to add a noise gate, which again, if you have the Reaper plugins, go ahead, add another one, and scroll all the way down to Regate, I believe it is. If I can find it, there we go. Regate, open it up. You can do it this way, you can use OBS's built-in way, do any way that you'd really like. And basically the main thing is you want to start off with the, what I'm calling the noise remover because that's what it is. Everything that you put in OBS as a filter is basically stepped out. So I have this one first, then it does this, then it does this. It's a lot better if you try to cut out the noise before you move on rather than cut it out later. And again, if you want to play around with things, go ahead, add more. You can do EQ, you can do pretty much anything. You can also add a compressor if you know anything about those. Essentially, go ahead and play around with those. This tutorial is just kind of get you started, and it's a quick, easy little setup. Uh, and let's see if I can record this, and I'll be kind of inserting this right here and talking about the rest as I continue going on. And hopefully you can notice it's probably not going to sound a whole lot different because I have the universal way set up. So if you like this, I'll send it back to uh, Recording Matt and we will see you there. And if that's all you want, it's all you need. Thanks for watching. All right, now that that's all set up, you're good to go. Unless you want to stick around and see the, what I'm going to call universal fix for this, meaning game chat literally anything, even if you want to use something other than OBS to capture audio. This is what you're going to need to do in order to get that, which this is the exact setup that I'm using. So stick around and I will show you that one. This one is a bit more intensive. It does require a few more programs. Uh, however, they're all pretty easy. They're all free. And that's the important part, right? So let's get into that. All right. Welcome back to the desktop or welcome to the first time to the desktop, depending on if you just skip to this point, because you don't want to be messing around with only being able to stream and have good audio. You want to be able to record with Audacity or whatever other program you're going to use to capture your audio. And you want your game chat audio sounding better. You want your teammates to be able to hear you better. Basically anything like that. Here's what we're going to be doing. So again, we're going to be starting off with the Reaper program the VSTs. Go ahead and download whichever version you need. Click one of these two buttons, it'll take you directly where you need to go. Next up, you're going to need this program, Voice Beater Banana. Um, for this tutorial, I'm actually using the more advanced potato version. I know it's kind of a weird naming system. Um, there it is. There, there it is. Now it's loading. You'd think that potato would be the lower version because it's potato. But anyways, it will work the exact same. Mine just looks a little more scary than what yours is going to be. This isn't going to be a tutorial on installing voice meter or how to use voice meter directly. But if you'd like to see that, let me know. There's plenty of tutorials out there already that show you how to set it up, go over just kind of the basics of voice meter. But this isn't what this is going to be about. The last thing that you're going to need is a VST host. For this, I'm just using light host. It's light enough and it works pretty well. Go ahead and click the either 32, 64. It's 2020. Your system's probably 64 bit anyways. So once you have all those installed and you have your voice meter set up, wow, look at mine. It is complex. 
yours is going to be a lot less. Yours will be about three and two, and it won't look like this. I just use this version because I like a little bit more of the options. But everything is going to run the exact same. So what you're going to need to do is open up Lighthost, which it'll just show up in your tray. Uh, I should probably be capturing that, shouldn't I? I'll switch it over when we get there. But go ahead and open up Lighthost. Now, what you're going to need to do is go to your settings in Voice Meter. Right here, you see a whole bunch of complicated stuff. These probably will not be checked on the bottom. The only thing that we're going to need is left one, left two, or left right. <sighs> Man, I am tired. Uh, N1 left, N1 right. Can you tell? I am exhausted. Anyways, go ahead and make sure those are checked. Each one of those is going to correspond to a channel. If you're using banana, you're only going to get about three. And whichever ones you check, so if you want all of your microphones to run these VST plugins, go ahead and click all of these. If you only want the first channel, I'll only do that. Right now I'm only using one channel, so I'm only going to have it set to that one. Alright, um, give me just a second to move things over so I can actually show the Lighthost side of things. Okay, over to the other desktop that I have. We will set up Lighthost. It should just be this little icon right down here. Go ahead and click that, and the first thing that you're going to need to do is set it up. So the easiest way to get this set up, go ahead, click the ASIO, because Voice Meter uses ASIO, and go ahead and select. For me, I found that Voice Meter Potato Insert Virtual ASIO works the best, because it really kind of sticks with it. You can try using Voice Meter Virtual ASIO. I would recommend not using the aux asio because that would be your second desktop audio kind of thing again this isn't going to be a voice meter tutorial or anything but just leave it to that and make sure all of these are checked except for those because i don't don't worry about those anyways uh we're going to go back and now we have to edit plugins and make sure that we have all of the plugins that we have installed. You're not going to see any right now because you haven't set it up yet. Just go ahead and click this options, scan, new, VST, VST3. Do both of those, it should come up. You're going to have quite a few less than I do, but I have a lot of plugins that I use. Anyways, go ahead and close that and open up this again. Now you're going to see Kuko's. Go ahead. Oh, oh, go ahead and <laughs> be careful when you move, but go ahead and come over to the Refear standalone, and it should show up right here. So go ahead, hover over, hover over that. Man, I really cannot talk today. Go ahead and move over and click Edit. If you watch the first part of this tutorial, you're going to see this is the exact same. Go ahead, it is going to be on. Oh no, I broke it. There we go. Go ahead and select, subtract, and it will be uh, automatically build with this robot. Oh no! It's not. There we go. You really have to make sure that you're being quiet during that. Otherwise, you'll end up with a result like that. So, yeah. Go ahead, click it, be quiet, let it run its thing, let it figure out exactly what areas it's going to need to cut out, and uncheck it before you say anything. If you want to add output gain, go ahead and add that. Now something else that you can do with this, if you have multiple plugins, you can run multiple plugins. The first one should always be your Refear standalone. Next up you can add anything, and if you don't want them active when you're talking, go ahead and click bypass. This is something fun that I have set up. A little bit of auto tune, yay! Uh, I don't use it very often. I don't recommend using it very often. I just have it set up for streams or messing with people if I want to. 
Um, anyways, go ahead, check out everything that you can use. If you want the GVST plugins, I haven't found much use for them, so if you want to download them, go for it. I can leave a link in the description. I just haven't found any use for them. I really do stick to the uh, Reaper plugins. They have quite a few different things. If you want to set up a noise gate or EQ, do any of that stuff, go for it. Again, this is kind of the advanced users tab of things, but as you can see, I'm using this program and it works just fine to capture everything. And I've had people tell me in game, in discord, everything like that. Wow, your mic sounds better. What did you do? Oh, I just installed one program. I think that's the frustrating thing. I was one program away from this kind of audio the entire time. Hey guys, so this is re-recorded a little later. I realized I kind of forgot to put this part in there, but you're going to want to run both voice meter and light host on startup. The way that you're going to do that, Windows run, I believe, ooh, shall start up, I believe. Oh, why did it open up over there? Here we go. And just make a extension or a shortcut to this and put it in here, as you see there. From there, everything should run exactly as it should. I should have my audio fixed from that kind of recording. Anyways, time to throw it back to, I guess, face mat, and I'll see you then. Thanks. All right. So that is the universal fix for any sort of audio setup. It would work with any sort of headset mic, any sort of quite literally any microphone that you're going to be using. And it's not going to be a end all be all solution. Obviously you're going to want to tweak with stuff, add in any sort of EQ that you're going to want, anything that you really want to play around with. Absolutely go for it. This is just to get you started. I know I spent years trying to get my audio to sound like this and I'm finally kind of happy with where it's at. I know I keep saying that in every new video I do where I discuss audio stuff, but I feel like this is actually finally a decent point for me to be able to take a step back and just do content again. So let me know what you want to see in any future content, any more tutorials, any more really anything. Um, I think after this I'm going to be working on a video where I discuss why I use voice meter and some benefits from there. Um, if you want to see a tutorial on how to set up voice meter, I can go pretty in depth on it. I know a lot of other tutorials are out there for just setting up voice meter, but I don't feel like they do a very good job most of the time with kind of describing what everything does. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully it makes a difference in your audio. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below. DM me on Twitter, at me on Twitter. I usually try to respond fairly well. You can ask anyone else on the channel. I try to at least respond, or at least, you know, like the comment, or something like that. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully this fixes things. I'll see you in whatever video comes next.